and we're back. Max effort bench day today. And after how emotionally turbulent my last two pressing sessions were, I do my best to make this one at least a little bit smoother. Still don't know what I'm doing for sure at this point. I know that I do have a slingshot in my bag. I have an Elite FDS shoulder saver pad in my bag. So I think rough plan is to work up to something schmedium full range and then either toss the slingshot on or toss the shoulder saver on. Like right now in my head, I'm kind of thinking shoulder saver might be the better option since last week was big and full range, but it's also not like the slingshot is gonna be too hard in the bottom end because it's supporting the bottom end. But again, we'll see how I feel when I get there. We'll figure out, stay tuned. And I figure I'm gonna be smart warming up, do some extra wide, really try to spread, really try to find upper back early and kind of start exposing that shoulder to more range so that comp grip hopefully feels more better and I'm not running into the shoulder sensitivity as much or as soon. Yeah, it's nice. Something else I'm trying to do better or at least different on warm-ups right now is trying to carry more reps through my warm-up sets to actually like get more warm, get more familiar with benching, get more familiar with the sensations that I need to be having when the weight is still light enough that it doesn't matter. Like I'm in a bad habit or at least a bad habit of right now of like wanting to get to the top sets with minimal reps as possible, but like doing as little reps as possible clearly hasn't panned out the last couple weeks, so let's do a 5 at 25 or maybe more. We'll see. And what's cool so far is this pad is like slippery as shit and I'm not having to fight for my life to maintain shoulder weight position. So y is definitely doing their job. <laughs> Kinda jacked up the unrack on that last one, need to get triceps locked a little bit sooner. Okay, last full range one. And like, I'm discovering the secret right now is like trying to balance like being assertive on the way down but still being slow enough that i don't lose control of it which i mean that should be pretty intuitive but it's been a struggle bus so far with the pack Set up a little too far under the bar, but actually pretty damn okay with how that one felt. It's like, wasn't talking about it, but in my head on the way up again, and I'm actually really, really, really stoked with how not in my head was that one. So, shoulder saber on. Yes. 
Okay, 385. This thing's kind of like a two board, which is historically a really hard range of motion for me. So let's not do a shitty job. Nope, take, 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 take. Okay, less shitty next time. Just fucking lost the groove. Take, 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 take. Fuck. Nope, not happening today. Okay, I think I know what I'm doing wrong. I think like because the shoulder saber is like this big ass thing in the middle, I'm not carrying it low enough. And then like because I'm too high, I'm just like losing the shoulders up and like trying to get to this. And then like, as soon as it goes like that, I'm like, no, nope, I'm not, I'm not safe. I just let it fall on me, which is, I mean, maybe sounds sketchy, but considering the pack, I'd rather not try to fight through that position. And like, even though I'm like just dropping it on myself, like the misses feel safe. So gonna give myself one more shot to figure this shit out or else we are moving on. So time to figure this shit out. How nervous are you? Hmm? I'm not. Okay, perfect. I, I as long as you're not afraid. I've got all the face in the world with you, man. Bring it out. That's it. Fuck yeah. Oh. That's a fucking horrendous spot. At least she went. So I'm sitting here thinking like, yeah, that still is a hard as shit range of motion for me. And like, part of me wants to put four on, but the other part of me is like, it's probably not smart after missing twice already today. And then like the other part of me wants to just like put the slingshot on over top of the shoulder saver pad and like go up. But then that also would be a stupid plan. And I think the smart part of me, like knowing how shitty that range of motion feels stopped at the bar there, I think that I'm gonna drop it down and get some reps in. Yeah, that is so shitty. So there's some new young dudes in the gym here traded hard and then there's me just missing really 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 light benches over and over again just being so self-conscious like they're gonna be like what the hell is wrong with this dude why can't he press 385 off the shoulder saver pad but turns out they watch the vlog so a little bit less embarrassed than i was before so we got a <laughs> vlog watcher here what's your name ken what's your instagram handle oh ken.a.moses Okay, go follow Ken Moses. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> you so much, buddy. I appreciate it. And knowing how bad those shoulder saver presses were, on paper, it's like maybe that was a terrible idea running that today. But because they were so bad and because they forced me to control the bar through that mid range where I've been lacking it, it was almost a really, really, really good idea. And I'm stoked that I was able to drop it down and actually get some productive work in there and get some better feels. And like right now I'm thinking that I probably need to be prioritizing more of that. So I think I'm gonna start running it as a secondary on my lighter bench. Because the biggest problem on the main press was upper back control, instead of just a regular incline dumbbell press, I'd run an incline key press where in the bottom we're gonna be palms facing up at the top, we're gonna to rotate, palms facing down, and then as we lower, we're gonna use the upper back to create that rotation and really just try to squeeze into the bottom and then press out controlling that 
flare. And if you're struggling with upper back on bench, struggling with finding lats, getting better at these can make it a whole lot more intuitive when you go back to pressing with a barbell. This actually feels really nice. I should have been running more of these sooner. We'll go up a bit. All right, 90s. Like you can see that bobble on the left arm. That's what I gotta smooth out. There we go. <laughs> that did the job. And like, I was thinking I want to do tape presses, but Darrell's over there doing roll-ins, so guess we're doing roll-ins. Keep hitting my bike. Sorry. Adjusted the mic so I don't accidentally make anyone on the other end deaf, but 95s. Hats over my eyes. Okay, there we go. Sick. 105s. This is gonna be heavy. I don't know maybe the Instagram comments are right and I do go too heavy on these but and at this point I'm like I don't want to train delts I don't want to train arms but not training delts not training arms is part of the reason why I am in my current predicament so let's not keep doing that I think what I gotta do a better job of here is making sure that my shoulder blade isn't like rolling forward as I'm lowering. Cause if I just like dump and move the shoulder blade, that's gonna reinforce the old dumpage problem on bench. <sighs> and that feels so much nastier. So good call Seth. try to change angles, got to show what I'm talking about with the shoulder. So like, if I'm here and I just like, Bleh, that is not delt, that's just like, I don't know, shoulder blade moving. But if I keep it locked in, not have that roll, feels so much nastier in a similar spot to where I am struggling with on bench. So probably good to keep doing it this way. Boom. 
and someone was asking why I don't do wrist cuffs on these. And like, yeah, wrist cuff might feel better, but I don't think holding onto the D handle is a limiting factor by any means. And I'm too lazy to put a wrist cuff on and off. <sighs> and with how things are feeling shoulder wise, figuring that side lying will be a decent option again, going lighter than the last time I ran these because the last time I ran these was freaking disgusting. And yeah, that is a decent feel. I'm gonna try to like guide it more up towards my face. So I'm getting a little bit more low trap in. Oh yeah, that is the ticket. <sighs> little pinchy through the AC at the bottom, which is the bad thing. Because I'm controlling it and it's kind of feeling better as I go through the set. Oh, yeah. <sighs> See how right he does. Yeah. World's better than the left, so. <sighs> we need more of these, so we're going to run some more of these. And no rest, straight back into the left. And it's like, when you're doing upper body unilateral shit, you can pretty much just go back and forth because it's like the entire time I was with my right side, my left side was resting. When I'm doing my left side, my right side is resting. So let me save a little bit of time. <sighs> Yeah. Good choice, Seth. And trying to hurry myself out of here again, not because it's way too late, but they're setting up for a strongman show tomorrow and it's getting friggin' busy, so I don't wanna be in the way for that. So, time efficiency, once again, gonna be kinda trying to get some lat and bicep at the same time. So it's like, pull lat, curl in, big old squeeze on both ends. And just get, as good working as you can and like it's probably not gonna be as good for the upper back as purely trying to pull with upper back it's probably not gonna be as good for the arms as purely just trying to curl with the arms but two for one it's at least decent enough to get the job done on a given day And halfway through that, I realized I didn't have the supinated mag grip. I was just using the pronated mag grip backwards, so supinated one. <sighs> yeah, that feels a lot nicer on the hands. Just more comfy. More comfy allows you to lock in. Lock it in allows you to get a bigger squeeze. Bigger squeeze. I mean, hopefully it's more productive. <sighs> Yeah, that is such a better connection. <sighs> and burnt out way faster. And here I am talking shit about wanting to get out of here on time. And I get stuck visiting for 20 minutes, so. 
We're just gonna crank through these curls. Grab the 40. Good old left, right, left, right protocol. Maybe I'll grab a 45 for the next round. Yeah, I think I'll do that. Hopefully, I don't fall on my face too much, but we'll see. Okay, 45. Just trying to drive elbow low, control eccentric best I can, and pray that the arms grow. <laughs> oh. And every day is torso day. Can't leave the gym without training the anterior chain. And these ropes in my face are a little bit annoying, so I'm going to move that after I'm done this leg. But once again, these things are a thing of freaking absolute beauty. All time favorite hip flexor. Tr training doodad I don't know where to put this there that'll work and for those of you who are new here trying to squeeze this glute hard try to keep abs on gonna let the back leg get pulled into a bit of hip extension and then just gonna pull that leg up while trying to keep the torso relatively situated and keeping that bottom glute nice and squeezed and you do these your hips will feel freaking Wonderful. Afterwards. <sighs> Booey. Look how smooth that transition was. <sighs> and like if I let the abs go and dump into extension versus keeping the abs on, like letting it go and dumping does not feel near as nice with the hip flexors as keeping the abs on, keeping it pulled in, and then pulling from that abs on, locked in position. It's getting hard fast. Ah. Yep. Yeah. Just try to get a little bit of stretch to the bottom as much as I can manage without dumping pelvis. And like, yeah, maybe I do have piss for hip extension, but at least it's getting better. And that is that. So kind of the beauty of running variations on max effort work is every time you venture to a new variation, it is a learning opportunity. And that learning opportunity can go one of two ways. You can either go, holy shit, I'm really strong here, or you can go, holy shit, I'm really bad here. And like, with both of those, like the takeaway, if you are really, really, really freaking good at a variation, you can kind of keep that in mind and like maybe pull that out of your hat on a day when you aren't feeling so good and you want to kind of take an easy win. And like if you find out, like I did today, that you're really freaking bad at a variation, similar to what I did with inclines not that long ago, it's going to give you an idea of what you need to work on and what you need to build so that you can get better. And kind of like the whole point of running conjugate, running concurrent training, is that it gives you an opportunity to really just address weak points and build yourself up so that there is as little weak in your lifting as possible. And every time you discover a new weakness, you just need to chase after that until it goes away. And obviously, like, if you're chasing after a weak point, eventually, like, other things are gonna need work, but by doing max effort work and by changing variations, you're going to then kind of be able to keep track of how things are progressing and how things are changing and how those weak points are shifting. And if you got half a brain while you're doing that, you can then adapt your accessories, adapt your secondaries to match what the max effort work is telling you. And that way you can drive forward as efficiently as possible. And I think that's what I got for you guys tonight. 
glad that bench went well, even though it didn't go well. Like, a little bit of an ego hit, but left in one piece. So I'm at least happy with that. And as always, these vlogs are sponsored by my own consultation services and the upcoming Making Conjugate Work for Raw Powerlifting Lecture series, where we're gonna get in nice and deep on how to figure out what is weak and then how to target those weak points via your secondaries and accessories so that you can make sure that you do not suck on the platform. So peace out guys, have a good rest of your night.